Zagros Ozkan says, Daniel and David, first David, would you guys sacrifice your firstborns if your God commanded it to you like he did with Abraham? I can say, yes, God commands me and I'm a prophet of God like Abraham. Yes, of course. I obey God. Um, We hear and we obey. And uh, I'm a diagnosed psychopath, so... (laughs) I, I have, I have, to, I have to say, there's, um, yeah, that is something I could, I, I would have a problem in that I would, I would not believe that it's from God, given the revelations that have been handed to me. But if, if I knew that it were from God, fortunately, I'm never in this situation. I've been commanded to love everyone, to harm no one, and so on. Um, but yeah, I have to say that uh, I have this sort of personality that I would obey God again. Come on, come on, David. If it were come me. on. What? Just defend Abraham. Just tell them when they I ask just said when it. these liberals just I say, just said it. yes, God commands it. I will do that. Don't just like give this long explanation. No, just I, say yes. Be a Chad, David. No, I, Be a Chad. Look, look, yo, yo, yo. I know from experience, as soon as you say I would uh yes, I I I would kill my son if I were ordered to or something like that. They all run with that and say he's he's gonna kill his son as soon as he hears a voice or something like that. And he's already crazy, so he's gonna hear a voice. And so I'm Let pointing out I'm, people, I'm pointing out that Let these losers say whatever they want. Uh defend it, it, Abraham. This is it's you believe nor- in Abraham. Be proud, it's norm- David. It's normally it's normally Muslim saying it. <laughs> No, but say. how could Muslims say it? Because Muslims believe in this, uh, that Abraham was commanded and he was going to do it. He was going to sacrifice his son. That's uh, that's what we believe. So how can they accuse you? Well, they Forget do. about these looter- losers, David. They do. I think you need to give a strong answer. Be a Chad. You can do it. I believe in you. Yeah. And, and by the way, in the, in the just so everyone knows, in the Bible, uh, God had made promises to Abraham about his son and about the covenant coming through his son. So the Bible also says that as far as Abraham's reasoning, it was God made these promises about this son and he's commanding me to kill him. Therefore, even if I kill him, God is going to raise him from the dead. That, th- those are Abraham's thought processes. And then when he's ready to do it, uh, what's really cool is he's he's willing to do it. And if you look, this is not a message about, hey, everyone should uh, should always be ready to kill their kids. In the surrounding culture, the highest form of worship, according to some of these weird groups, was ch- child sacrifice, right? And so the, the takeaway message from that situation is God is saying, hey, you know, Abraham, you all have this test about the, the greatest thing someone can do is to sacrifice their child. Uh, Abraham is just as devout and obedient as any of the rest of you. The difference between you and Abraham is you have a different God. Your God requires that child sacrifice. Abraham's God doesn't require that sacrifice. Abraham's God provides his own sacrifice. And notice what uh, Abraham Abraham even said, God will provide the sacrifice. God will provide the lamb. And if you look, you know, when, Abraham David, said, oh, let me just finish. I'm almost done. Abraham said, uh, Abraham said when he was asked by Isaac, hey, you know, where's the sacrifice? Abraham said, God will provide the lamb for sacrifice. And if you look, then God provided a ram. What happened to the lamb Well, very interesting. That whole situation was on Mount Moriah. That's where Jerusalem is. And that's where the Lamb of God became the sacrifice of uh, of God. So interesting how all this scripture ties together. You're just just liberal splaining. You're getting the gospel. You're getting the... Bring a sword. This is how you answer. You just flash this sword and say, yes, I would. (laughs) Bring a sword to all of these debates and conversations, David, and prove that you're a Chad. You're not embarrassed about your scripture. Yes, I would. Yes, I'm just trying. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to give a complete picture there because everyone's going to again. They're going to no, think, they're, ah, they're, they're, ta- they're talking it. about killing kids. What's up with these guys? They're talking about let killing them, kids. Let yes. them shout. Make, them, make, them, look, that. make them look like fools. Make them we're look like jump. fools. That's we're going to jump. Maltehi says, "For David, you're on record cross-dressing because you misinterpreted a hadith. Are you actually a closeted cross-dresser?" Um, I mean, that was supposed to be a a, a comedy video. But I don't know if you mean I don't know if what you mean with closeted cross dresser. I did it in video. <laughs> I did it in video. If you mean do I do it in private? No, I don't. <laughs> um, if you're talking about uh, will I publicly make fun of something, going to some extreme methods? Yes, uh, I'm happy to when I'm making trying to make some kind of point. And 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 for the record, 
I'm kind of joking in that situation. Uh, there are the, there are these passages that talk about um, uh, Muhammad, and it'll say that he was in Aisha's mert or thalb. Mert, mert does mean dress. Uh, thalb just means uh, garment. Uh, then there are Muslims who say this means this in this situation means blanket, or maybe she had her garment wrapped around him or something like that. Uh, I'm I'm fine with any of that. It is consistent to say. I mean, you could interpret it to mean that he was actually, you know, prancing around in her nighty. But again, I'm, I'm not glued to that interpretation. I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of I'm kind of joking. And this is a situation when people constantly send you messages saying they're going to, uh, you know, slaughter you. They're going to rape your wife. They're going to rape your mother. They're going to kill your kids. Eh, sometimes you just kind of you got to lighten up and uh, and, and kind of make fun of them. The Super Destroyer says apostasy law isn't a divine law. A lot of scholars like Sufian al-Thari didn't think apostates should be given capital punishment. There is a lot of nuances to it. Don't you know that, David? Um, I'm assuming Daniel would actually agree with me on this one. Uh, but, yeah, Muhammad yeah. said if anyone leaves his Islamic religion, kill him. You have, you know, like Muhammad Hijab says, maybe it means... Uh, you know, you can exile them or, or, you know, maybe maybe that would be an alternative. And you have I've seen Muslims who say that this only refers to um, you if you're you're sort of publicly announced, you know, going around spreading your apostasy. But, uh, yeah, I, I interpret it. I interpret it. I interpret Muhammad's words as meaning at the very least in an Islamic state that you would be executed for apostasy whether you could do it on a personal level hey that guy just left islam let me go let me go chop chop him up um i'm not sure about i'm not sure about that one but uh yeah again i'm, I'm assuming daniel would, would agree with me on on this one yeah i agree like there's no difference of opinion the only difference of opinion on apostasy is uh, some claim that uh, you have uh, you would be in prison for life so if someone apostates it doesn't matter if it's public or if it's private if someone hears you then you've left the religion then you have three days basically to repent if you if you don't do so then it's capital punishment that's the majority of islamic scholars throughout history have said that the only difference of opinion is some minority said it's life in prison for the apostate and i have videos explaining the moral justification of this type of um, command from god the super destroyer says david why when you add the passages in Genesis, you get that Rebecca was three when she got married, and this is the opinion of scholars for centuries. Even today, Rabbi Chaim Mintz acknowledges that she was three. Uh, <laughs> he would have to be an idiot to conclude that. Um, I, I would want to see evidence that that's not a a fabricated person because there's no way you would read there's no way you would read Genesis and conclude that uh, she's clear I mean she's working when um, when Abraham's servant actually uh, gets out there she's actually you know she's a, a, a she's a, a shepherdess on her own if she's three years old that makes no sense the mis the mistake the mistake that anyone who who makes this argument makes is there's a verse which says, and they heard that Abraham had a relative named Re Rebecca born. And so the, the argument is, well, right when Abraham heard it, that means that that's when she was born right there. And then they start doing math. Now, the ridiculousness of this is Abraham is a far, a long, long way away from his relatives. They don't have the internet. They don't have a telephone um, so to conclude that as soon as she's born, that's when he hears it is ridiculous. You can hear it. I mean, if you think about when you'd get messages from so far away from home, you'd get messages every several years when a traveler's coming through uh, and says, here's a message. Here, here's the news from back home. Um, so it's a it's a silly argument. And the 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 real reason for it is. There are people who don't like criticisms against Muhammad for having sex with a nine-year-old girl, and so they try to, to argue that the Bible uh, teaches that Rebecca was three. Even again, there's no reason based on the passage to conclude that when Abraham heard about Rebecca, that's right when she was born, like that day. That's that's ridiculous. She could have been ten. She could have been fifteen when Abraham finally heard news from back home, and. 
but unfortunately, you have to make that assumption in order to get this to work. The problem is, given the description of uh, of Rebecca and her interaction with people, she would have to be the most precocious three year old in all of human history. If she's if she's three and she's already working and she's talking to her family and having the kind of discussions that she's having, uh, she would have to be the most precocious three year old in history. So so guys, stop using this this really bad argument. If you, if you want to if you want to attack the Bible, then attack the Bible, but but don't be dishonest when you do it.